Well, you're awfully far from home, aren't you? Not many people like to venture into this forest so late in the day. And forgive me for judging, but it seems a bit late for an impromptu camping trip, especially for someone as young as yourself. Even more so when someone as young as yourself decides to do so, completely alone. Unless, are you running from someone? Why would I suspect that? It's happened before. You'd be surprised how often it happens, really. People come into the forest thinking they'll lose their chaser. And they do. Most of the time. However, in doing so, most people don't think that they'll be able to get themselves lost, too. They're arrogant. They think that just because they run in a straight line, they can't get lost. But then, their chaser runs in a straight line, too. Their chaser is faster. So they run in zigzag patterns and squiggly lines, and then they're lost. You don't think you'll get lost? And why is that? You've been researching this forest for a while. And why is that? Why am I asking so many questions? I suppose I'm just a curious guy. Can you blame me? You can. And why is that? You think I ask too many questions for someone who is also in the woods at a rather late hour. Well, I suppose I can't fault you for being wary of me, then. After all, it's highly unlikely for two people like us to be in the forest at the same late hour at the same time. You think that I'm following you? Then why would you think that? My hair? I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about unless you're implying that I murder people and then dip my hair in their blood to dye it red. But if you know anything about blood, you would know that it dries a rather brownish color. How do I know so much about blood? Do you really think it's so uncommon for someone to get scraped up and need a bandage? And when you peel off that bandage, do you really think it's so unusual for someone to see that the blood has dried brown? I suppose it is easy to overlook that detail of someone's life, but that's beside the point. You said that my hair made you think I was following you. Why is that? You saw something red moving amongst the trees earlier? And how do you know it wasn't a cardinal or something like that? The way it was moving didn't seem like it was a bird? Well, perhaps it was simply a falling leaf. Why wouldn't you suspect that? The movements didn't match up with a falling leaf? You're awfully smart, aren't you? You know all about physics, all about this forest. But why would you suspect that I was following you? Really? The red thing that you saw, it was moving the way a person's head would if they were walking? I see. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it seems you need to research physics a little bit more. Why? Because you said that my hair was moving the way someone's hair would if they were walking. And as you'll come to see in a few seconds, I don't walk. <laughs> now, now, don't struggle, don't struggle. You're only going to exhaust yourself, and then I can't have any fun with you. No, no, that isn't what I mean. I'm not going to torture you or eat you alive. After all, that would be rather boring, don't you think? 
What am I going to do with you? Well, I still need to decide, actually. I wasn't expecting anyone to come into the forest at this hour, much less on a day like today. What do I mean by that? Do you perhaps read the local newspapers? You're awfully feisty, aren't you? No, I don't read the papers myself, but I do have a source on the outside of this forest who's able to tell me what's going on in the world. And he told me that, just today, there was a headline saying that a girl's body had been found in these woods, rather recently, too. I take it, then, that you don't read the paper. After all, if you did, you wouldn't have come here in the first place. Really? That's why you came here. Would you care to elaborate on your little story, then? Not to me? Well, that's rather harsh, don't you think? And rather foolish. Are you really so ignorant that you can't understand why it would be foolish? Very well, then. You realize that I'm holding you in my tail, right? And you realize that snakes have a tendency to constrict their prey before eating them. I said I wasn't going to eat you, but I do know how to treat broken bones, so it would be no hassle for me to crush you until your ribs broke, and then treat you until you told me what was going on with you. You think I'm bluffing. Now, is that just human panic kicking in? Or do you actually have no regard for your own safety? Oh, you genuinely believe that I'm not going to hurt you. Well, all right. Try and see if you really did call a bluff, would you? Oh, you want to change your mind now? All right. Now, are you going to tell me your story, too? Or do I need to start crushing you again? There, now, was that so difficult? You think it was? Well, then, I guess you'd better prepare to start making it easier for me. Otherwise, your bones are going to be broken over and over until you tell me everything I want to know about you. All right? You don't think that's going to happen? Very well, I'll let you believe that for now. But in the meantime, you promised me a story. I expect you to fulfill on your promise. Good. Now tell me, why did that girl's death interest you so much? She was a friend of yours. I see. Were you close enough that I should offer my condolences, or were you merely friends who occasionally spoke to each other? You were rather close? Then my sincere apologies for your loss. No, no, I didn't know her. I did, however, see her body once. It was rather strange. She almost looked like she'd been drowned. But the odd thing about that is, well, as I'm sure you know from all your research, there are no bodies of water in this forest. No bodies of water close to it, either. How very odd that she should be drowned in the middle of dry land, don't you think? That's why you came to investigate? Did you perhaps suspect that there was something the police overlooked? You did. Well, I certainly would agree with you on that, but I doubt that you'll find what you're looking for. Why is that? First of all, you're acting under the assumption that I'm going to let you go any time soon. Second of all, before you start complaining, whatever did that to that poor girl, 
that isn't something that you want to mess around with. Trust me on this. What makes me say that? Take a look around you at this forest. Take a good, long look. You're going to notice some differences between this forest and every other forest on this planet. Can you see it? Precisely. The sun never shines through the leaves of the trees. Oh no, I'm not exaggerating. It never breaks through, which is rather aggravating for me, but I've managed to find other ways to get heat. Like what? Well, I am partially human. I do possess enough intelligence to know how to make a fire. Not to mention I've found several campers here before, and I may or may not have stolen some of their camping supplies. Sleeping bags, blankets, things like that. No, no, don't worry, I never touched that friend of yours. I will say I'm a thief, but I'm no murderer. Well, unless, of course, you count killing in self-defense as murder. But I highly doubt anyone would consider that true murder. There's something else on your mind? What does the darkness have to do with why you don't want to find what killed your friend? The darkness, it covers everything. You might have a flashlight, but that's not going to do you much good in a place like this, where the creatures have adapted to living in the dark. They can blend in with anything, not to mention... They can see through the darkness more easily than you can, especially once those batteries in your flashlight run out. And then, you'll be alone and defenseless. Why do you think I'm not letting you go any time soon? Don't be fooled. I'm not keeping you because I want to protect you. Far from it, actually. I just know that I can use you in other ways that don't involve killing or hurting you. Such as entertainment, of course. After all, humans possess qualities that are rather amusing. For instance, you tend to get flustered rather easily. You get embarrassed, you get angry and annoyed. Those things are rather amusing to me, since... Most people who see me, well, they're usually scared at first, but then I get on their nerves, and usually they'll try to kill me, at least if they live in this forest. But you can't do that, so I can have my fun with you, and never have to worry about you hurting me. Oh, really? You'd entertain me willingly? And... What's the price for your compliance? You want help? Let me guess. You think that having me assist you will allow you to find out what killed your friend? Oh no. I mean what? Not who. Because if anything in this forest killed your friend, we're dealing with a creature... A creature that you could never dream about, even in your worst nightmares. That sounds far from a person, don't you think? Indeed, I am right. And since I am, I suppose you would need my help if you were going to solve this little mystery. Tell me, though, what was your friend's name? That wasn't mentioned in the article that my friend found. Ryo Nakamura. Hmm. And what did she look like? Yes, I did see her body before it was taken away, but I want to make sure it was actually her body that I saw. If I'm mistaken, after all, we might be looking for something else entirely. So what did she look like? 
long blonde hair and blue eyes? Well, her hair didn't look all that blonde when I saw her, but her eyes were unmistakably the ones you're describing. Very well, then. In fact, I think solving this little mystery would be more entertaining than anything I could think of. Yes, I believe I am saying what you think I'm saying. You've got yourself a deal. If you'll provide the entertainment, I'll provide my assistance. <laughs>